Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. All right, go ahead and open your Bibles, if you will, to the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians. We're going to talk about walking in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse 25 says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, as, as new creation and born again believers, one of the things we, our spirits became alive unto God, because they became alive unto God, we are now to live out of our spirit in conjunction with the work of the Holy Spirit in us. Now remember the book of Philippians says that he is all the while at work in us, creating in us both the will and the desire to do his good pleasure. Out of that's the Amplified Version. All right, so the Holy Ghost is on the inside working with our spirits. You know, creating a desire to follow after God. Can you say amen? amen. But we will have the desire. Hallelujah. So uh, let's read, look in the book of Romans, chapter 8. Hallelujah. And um, we're, we're, we're all kind of working through this particular situation. That, you know, we are uh, making adjustments. Hallelujah. Got folks uh, who are all wrapped up. Got folks who just decided to drive the cars up close to us and sit in the cars. Daddy put the top down so she's cruising on uh, Ocean Boulevard right here in Greensboro. Hallelujah. Others are wrapped up and bundled up like it's the middle of the winter. And uh, but th th thank God it's not 90 degrees this morning. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, we'll read verses 1 through 14. It says this, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So there are New Testament laws. Hallelujah. There's one called the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. There's a law that's still working in the, in the earth called the law of sin and death. But the law of the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus is more powerful than the law of sin and death. Thank God everything God has is more powerful than the enemy. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. For what the law could not do, I'm, um, um, could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Hallelujah. Um, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Now remember, the law, the Bible said that there could have been a law given that would have produced righteousness. We could have lived in that law. The law couldn't do it. What the law did do, it was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Because only the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus can cause righteousness to be fulfilled in us. Okay? So we can't live in law righteousness. We have to live by faith righteousness. Hallelujah. And uh, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. For they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because, let me say this, if you are born again and you want to live in a carnal mind, you're not going to live in life and peace. I'm under grace. It doesn't matter. If you keep your mind calm and don't do something about that, like renewing your mind to the Word of God and living out of what the Word teaches us, you're not. You're going to live according to the carnality of your flesh. You have to renew the mind. And so, so the carnal mind's entity works against God. I said it works against God. We renew our mind with the Word of God so that it's full of the life of God, so that it is engrafted. The regrounded word saves or restores, makes sound our soul. So that our mind is not carnal, our mind is spiritual. It thinks in the way God wants us to think. Hallelujah. But to be spiritual man in his life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. And if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken or make alive your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelt in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as led by the Spirit of God 
They are the sons of God. And what we have here is we have a couple of things uh, at work. One is the recreated human spirit. The recreated human spirit is how is we're to be living from instead of out of our carnal flesh and mind. The Bible uh, teaches us that when we were born again, we became new creatures in Christ. Teaches us we're to renew our minds to the Word of God. Teaches us that we're to put our bodies under. We're to live after the Spirit. Now, after the after after the life is in the recreated human spirit, and by the working of the power of the Holy Spirit. All right. And so we live out of our spirits. Uh, Paul wrote and to the church at Rome, I believe it was, they were called to live in a whole, uh, he, he said, and, uh, and how did he wrote it in the King James? He said, um, we are called the newness of life, or one translation says a whole new sphere altogether. See, you learn from the time you were born to live after your flesh. You learn from the time you were born to live in the flesh. You learn from the time you were born to live in the dictates of the flesh. But when you got born again, that man's alive with God in communion with God and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we're called to walk after the Spirit. We're going to let the Spirit have supremacy. A lot, a lot of people who want to, you know, want to claim that they got the right to live, you know, uh, any way they want to because they're under, and they won't say it that way. They'll say, you know, I'm not, I don't have to give. I don't have to tithe. I don't have to go to church. I don't have to obey. I can drink. I can fornicate. I can commit adultery. It doesn't matter. Uh, if I, I'll be, why? Because I'm under grace. Now, I know some people who, who preach grace say, people don't do that. Oh, yes, they do, because I've counted them. Right. I've talked with them. They've told me these things. So I don't know what planet you're living on, but that's what, that's what they're saying. And the fact, the fact is, the Bible calls us not to, to not continue to live under that fallen or defeated nature of carnality, but to live in this new sphere that has been granted unto us by coming into union with God through Christ Jesus our Lord. We're to walk in the Spirit. Our spirit man is to be the one that dictates how we act, how we conduct, where we go, what we say. Our spirit man is the one that is called so that we can live above, hallelujah, and live in the power of God and not live in the defeated place of the flesh or carnality. Amen. Carnality is simply giving yourself over to the will and the dictates of, a, of the flesh, which is carnal. Yeah. Uh, Your flesh will always be carnal until you get a re re renewed or glorified body. And so Jesus comes, this corruption puts on incorruption, and this mortal puts on immortality. Your body is carnal. Amen. Hello. Amen. My body is not carnal. You can confess that all day long and turn it loose. I've, I've had, uh, we had a beagle. We had beagles for 20, uh, 22 years. We had a beagle. Now we got, a, you know, Nathan has a blue tick coon down. Well, our, our beagle, we, we had, to, uh, she had to be, go put and sent to doggy heaven a week ago. And, um, you know, you could, that beagle could go and get in the trash can, and you could go there and beat the living daylights out of her. I mean, and run off with a broom, and do everything you want to. Turn around, walk away, and you come back, and she's right back in it. That's carnality. Flesh root. You know, the, 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 the getting beat and spanked and all that stuff had no bearing on the fact that their flesh dominated so much. I'm going back to the trash can because there's a chicken bone in there. Or there's a pork chop with sweet baby rays on it. I don't know, you know, something. You know, leftovers. I mean, it can be rotten. And they say, ah, I got to tear it in the bag. That's how your flesh is. If you do not live out of your spirit, your flesh will say, I know I shouldn't, but I'm going anyway. And when you watch, you can go right there and do it anyway. Because that's carnality. You see, we are called to live in the Spirit. We are called to live out of our spirits. We are called to live in a different place. We are called to live in a new sphere. We are to walk in the Spirit. Why? Because there is great blessing there. That is where God dwells. God walks in that place. So He doesn't walk in the place of carnality. He walks in that, new, that sphere, that heavenly sphere, that whole new plane that we are to walk in, out of our human, we created human spirits, in conjunction and working with the Holy Ghost. Amen? That's where we're going to live. So we're to walk in the Spirit. Everybody say, I'm to walk in the Spirit. I'm to live out of my Spirit. See, since you're born again, your Spirit's a good place to live out of. God's life's in it. Hello? Now see, the, the life of the Spirit will affect your body. It can make it well. It can make it sound. If you turn that bad boy loose, he'll go right back and do exactly what you don't want him doing. How many of you ever gone from an all-you-can-eat buffet? 
three of you. Anybody else here ever been to the All You Can Eat Buffet? Been to, been to Golden Corral, been to, I mean, you know, the old Sony's Breakfast Bar. You know, we don't even have a Sony's in Greensboro anymore. They're all gone. You know, I mean, Jay and I would drive from Greenville to Tulsa, and we would uh, we would get to Little Rock, Arkansas. We'd always get to Little Rock. We'd drive all night long. We always pulled up at six o'clock in the morning at the, the Shelby's in Little Rock off the interstate and get all you could eat breakfast bar. Well, she wasn't all that interested in it. I was. I wanted the all you could eat breakfast bar. I wanted to pay one price and gorge. You know, then you hear the sermons on temperance and, you know, modesty and, you know, not being a glutton. And you, and you still go to the all you can eat and say, I bet I'm going to go eat one plate. But then you look at your ticket and you feel like, well, I paid for more than one. I got to get my money's worth. And you start justifying. Your flesh will justify carnality. And there's a lot of people trying to use Bible to justify carnality when God's calling us up to a different place. We are not born again to remain in the flesh. We're not born again to remain under the dictates of the flesh. We've been delivered by the hand of the Most High through the new birth so that we can live in a higher place. Amen. Walking in the Spirit is the higher place. It's the place of reality. It's the place that God dwells. It's the place that God meets our us and deals with us and speaks to us and communes with us. It's in the Spirit. The, the, the true worshipers of God worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Hello. So whether you've got a fog show, a light show, a dance team, a, a banner team, you know, whatever, you know, you've got to be able to, you, the true worshipers worship out of their spirit. Amen. Yes. Hello. Amen. Whether you're doing the Tulsa two-step or the old Tulsa two-step or the old Pentecostal chicken. Amen. Ha, ha, ha. Some of y'all been there, done that. You know, it is we worship God in the spirit. It has to come out of the recreated human spirit. The true worshipers. Our life is to be hid in God, in Christ, and live out of our spirits. Because right. that spirit's alive unto God. His nature is in there. His life is in there. And that is where he communes. Why? God is a spirit. Amen. He wants us to worship him in spirit. He wants us to walk in the spirit. He wants us to live in the spirit. He didn't call us to be carnal. Can you say amen? amen. Well, how, what are some of the ways we get there? Well, one, we go to 1 Corinthians 14. Now, I'm going to tell you if, you, if you're born again, you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need to be a tongue talker. You need to pray in the Spirit. Pray and be the Spirit. I'll just turn it off right now. No, don't leave, don't leave, don't leave. It's New Testament. Amen. Hello? Amen. God gave us the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that we would be empowered to commune with Him spirit to spirit with, un with untainted uh, carnal thoughts, without our mind governing and controlling how we commune with God. He gave us the baptism of the Holy Ghost so we could pray in the Spirit and commune with Him in the Spirit. Amen. The Apostle Paul himself, now you got, you got people running around trying to say the lack of importance is praying in tongues. Paul said, I'd rather speak you have five words about understanding than 10,000 words in another tongue. Read what he was talking about. Then in the church, they might be edified by his voice. He said, when I'm addressing people, if you study the context of it, what Paul's saying is, when I'm addressing people, I will speak five words with their, my understanding the 10,000 words in tongues. Why? Because I want to edify them. He speaks in another tongue, edify himself. Hello. But Paul before also said in that same passage, he said, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all. And in the, in the Greek it says more than all of you are all of you put together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So you need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Well, I got born again. I got all the Holy Ghost I'm ever going to get. You better be a better Bible student. <laughs> Hello? The Bible says in, in the book of Acts that when Jerusalem heard that uh, Samaria had received the word of God, and they were filled with down to Samaria and preached Christ, people giving heed to him, both hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. And when the, 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 uh, the disciples of Jerusalem heard that they received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, might lay hands on them, that they might receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen on none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then if you're a good Baptist and you've been, you confess Jesus as your Lord, and you've been baptized in water in the name of Jesus, you're saved. But they sent Peter and John for them to come down and lay hands on them that they would be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. And when Simon saw that they were the laying on the hands of the, of the apostles' hands, they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. He offered them money, saying, Give unto me this power also, that whoever I lay my hands, they might be filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. It's not the same experience. 
You don't get all the Holy Ghost you're ever going to get when you get born again. You get the new birth. You get the witness of the Spirit. You're born of the Spirit. But the, the, apparently the disciples of Jerusalem thought there was more. See, Philip was an evangelist. He got him saved, got him healed, got him, you know, got him healed. Peter and John came there and had a gift to lay hands on people, get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Lord. Are you here? You're going home. Yeah. So what do we do? First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2. What do we, we, we can actually start in verse 1. Follow after love and desire spiritual. Now remember that from the previous chapter. And the previous two chapters, 12 and then you know, 13 and now in the 14, the word spiritual in the Greek, because it's got gifts following. Now the word spiritual is a plural in the Greek, and so it really says spirituals, and can be literally translated, they are following after things and desire, things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. So he says here, follow after love. I got that. And desire things of a pertaining to the Holy Ghost, but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaketh in the uh, uh, King James added undone, but it's, it's not unknown. It be tongues of men or of angels. Heaven and God knows what the language is. Hallelujah. But it's unknown to the, to the speaker. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Now let me say this. You got people going around saying you shouldn't. Well, we don't believe that's of the devil. But the Bible says when you speak in tongues, you speak to God. Now that's what the Bible says. Nowhere in the Bible does it say he who speaks in tongues is of the devil. That's just something man made up. Amen. All right? He says, He that speaketh in unknown tongues speaketh unto, unto, not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the Spirit he speaketh mysteries. Oh, thank God for speaking mysteries. Amen. Thank God that when we pray to the Holy Ghost, we commune with the Father. Thank God when we're praying in the Holy Ghost, our spirit is uninhibited in communing and connecting with the Most High, hallelujah, and, and articulating with Him in a language He knows exactly what we're saying, praise God, and we come in contact with Him and our spirit. Now, uh, um, um, James says that our spirit is charged up. He that prayeth in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. Right. Amen? 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 No, I'm sorry. Uh, but ye beloved, Jude said, but ye beloved, Jude 20, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 20. You, you love building up yourselves on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And some folks say that's fervent prayer. Well, Paul says it's praying with tongues. Yes. He, he, he differentiated between praying with your understanding and praying in the Spirit. He said if you're praying in the Spirit, you're praying with an, an unknown tongues. Amen. When you pray with understanding, your mind's fruitful. When you're praying in tongues, your spirit's fruitful, but your mind's not fruitful. What is it then? Oh. But he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification. Now Paul say what? Well, look, we get together, it wouldn't do us a bit of good if all of us just look at each other and talk in tongues. You would get your socks blessed off, they wouldn't get a thing out of it. So, we have certain goals or certain priorities or certain purposes. When we gather together in a group, our, our heart should be to edify and to build up the others. Amen? Our heart and desire should be to build up others. Meaning what? Meaning that if I'm going to talk with you, I don't need to sit there and speak in tongues and show you I'm filled with the Holy Ghost and speaking tongues and I'm a tongue to Woo! Hey, woo! I, I'm better than you because I, 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 can, I, I can pray in 14 different languages. Ha ha! No. Take, our, take what's on the inside of the Spirit and be able, be able to minister to the people and edify them and, and, and build them up. So when we come together, when I speak to men, I'm not there to pray in tongues to show them I, I, I can do that. I'm there to build them up and edify them. So what, now I'm going to lean and prophesy or speak out of the realm of the Spirit with unction, supernatural unction by the Holy Ghost to give words of life and words of understanding and words of comfort to them that will help them. Amen. Amen? That's what we're called to do. Pray. So he that speaketh unto unknown tongues uh, speaketh unto, uh, not unto men but unto God. He that prophesieth to speaketh unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. He that speaketh unto tongue edifieth himself. The word edifieth comes from a Greek word that has and bears the meaning of charging. Much like we charge a car battery. Anybody ever had a car battery die? Now you either get somebody to come out with some jumper cables or you got a you got a you know a triple charger in the garage and you put the plug on it and you, you put it on there and leave it in and it charges it up and builds it up and you know, well, they finally got it in. Yeah, yeah. Thank we're, you for your prayers. That helps a lot. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna break that and move it in there. We're just gonna keep going. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you, you charge it, it builds it up. Okay? Builds up the battery. Well, see, praying in tongues builds up your spirit. Right. Amen. Strengthens your spirit. That's 
Hallelujah. Why? Because you're allowed, you're communing with God. He said before that, he says, He that prayeth for the none in tongues and speaks not unto men, but unto God. That communion with God charges your spirit. That's why people love to get into services where there's a manifestation of the Spirit of God. If they're not praying enough with the Spirit, if they're not doing things to help build themselves up, they just like being around it because, it, because that, that, that presence of God charges them. Even you can get sinners and get them around the presence of God, it'll, it'll, it'll stir them. Being around God's presence. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. Thank you. All right. Now let's go on. It says here, so we pray in the Spirit. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Ephesians 6, 18. That's right after Galatians and right before Philippians. Now Paul talks about here, he gives out the, the uh, armor of God. And he says, above all, take in the shield. And I'll actually back up. Wherefore, verse 13. You take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Or as J.B. Phillips' translation says, stand on the battlefield, ready to do battle again. Amen. All right. when, you beat, when, when you face the devil and, saw, and stood him down, don't pull David. What did David do? He killed Goliath and ran off and started partying about the fact he killed Goliath when there were still four more brothers he was supposed to take care of. Right. Goliath had four brothers. David had five sons, not so he could miss four times. He was supposed to kill all five of them. Right. Eventually, in his life, he does. But the older he got, the more help he needed in comp completing the task. Right. Are you here? Amen. See, when we, do, we, we, when we uh, fight the battle to the end, we're to remain on the battlefield, ready to do battle. And we're, we're to stay sober. We're to be vigilant. We're to be ready. You know, and stop rejoicing in the victory that's already passed and be ready for the next battle to come. Why? Because we're winners. Amen. If you get if you turn your back and start rejoicing, you might get kicked right in the seat of the pants. Amen. And then you got to try and fight and win that ground back. Yeah. Verse 18. Pray, uh, sorry, verse 17. Verse 16, 14. Uh, 14, there we go. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you should be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. <clears throat> and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication, how? In the Spirit. Watching there all to, thereunto with all perseverance, with all saints. Hallelujah. We are to yield ourselves to the Spirit of God so that we get Spirit-directed prayer. Amen. The Holy Ghost is involved. Amen. The Holy Ghost is undergirding. The Holy Ghost is directing. Right. Can you say amen? amen? The Holy Spirit is the one who is, you know, we're praying all kind of prayer, but in the Spirit. Right. We're letting the Spirit of God guide and direct and help us. Can you say amen? amen. Why? So that we can, we can achieve the will of God. I'll tell you, if we spent more time searching the scriptures and less time pleading with God about if it be your will, we could be more effective in our prayers. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because we could find out what his will is before we go into prayer and then pray his will. Right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. You know, save the Lord if it's your will. Well, stop. Go back. Pick up your Bible. God's not willing that any should perish. Amen. The Lord says, send, pray to the Lord of harvest and send forth laborers into his harvest. Okay? Now, I can pray more effectively by praying with the Bible. It says, Lord, so-and-so needs you. Send laborers across his path that will bring the truth to him, bring the light to him, bring the word to him. May the Holy Spirit strive with him Amen. and bring him to a place of, of, of understanding that Jesus is Lord and soften his heart so that he can receive salvation. Hallelujah. Instead of praying, oh, God, save this if it's your will. You know? Oh, God, one day. Well, today's a day of salvation if your heart not your heart. Yeah. So, Let's pray according to the word. If you if you listen to the Holy Ghost, He'll guide you. I say He will guide you in how to pray. Amen. He'll be a whole lot more effective. Amen. Are you here? Amen. Then this morning we we, uh, we had a, uh, the locksmith came out and tried to get. He finally just was about two minutes ago got in. Been there for almost two, well an hour and a half. He's tried everything he knew on the book to get in there. 
Hello. Finally got in. Hallelujah. He, he, he broke in. He drilled it out. Hallelujah. Oh, he got chairs. <laughs> you know you chair? You got a chair. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So we're going to pray in the Spirit. Second, or third, we need to stay in the Spirit. Amen. You can't stay in the Spirit looking for ways to be in the flesh. Right. Amen. Now, I know people say stuff like, if you love God, then, you know, God, God loves you, therefore you love God. If you love God, you won't want to do things that... Well, then a lot of people don't love God. Come on now. Amen. Now, according to your reasoning, they don't love God. Right. No. The way it is, is they're not doing the things they need to be doing that will cause them. You say, you got flesh. Right. It wants to take over. Mm -hmm. Hello? And the Bible gives us Things we're supposed to do that will empower us not to be carnal. Right. We're to receive and meet this thing granted word, which is able to save our soul. Right. We're to pray in the Holy Ghost to build ourselves up on the inside. You know, we're, we're to, to search the scriptures. We're to be in fellowship with God. Amen. We're just saying, well, if I'm born again, I love God, that I'm not going to do wrong. You know, well, then, then why didn't they just do that with the whole Bible? Jesus came, said, now, believe on me. Love God, you'll be all right. See you when I come back. Right. In the Bible. Back, sure. But that's not what happened, is it? No. All you need to know, folks, is that you're born again and you love God and you don't need to know anything else because everything else can be taken care of by grace and you don't have to either. That's it. Right. Just hang out until I get back because you love me. But that's not what the Bible teaches us, is it? The Bible goes through a lot of things. It teaches us how to put off the flesh. It teaches us how to live in, in righteousness. It teaches us how to live out of the Spirit. It teaches us how to let the Word of God have an effect on us. Amen. You have to you have to make staying in the Spirit is a choice you have to make. It's like you, you choose. God don't make you get saved. You choose to accept what He's done for you. Right. You have to choose to walk where He wants you to walk. And if you don't, then you by default will give over to the carnal, carnal flesh. Right. Amen. You're living in a fallen world with a God of this world who is evil, with a flesh that is carnal that wants to do wrong, and there's a spirit that tries to work in your members constantly. You have to put off the old man and put on the new man. Okay. Hello. Are you here? Amen. But you hear some people say, oh, no, no, I just love God. Because I love God, I'm not going to do anything wrong. Yeah. Then, then that should have been the instruction to the church. We wouldn't need all the books of Paul. We wouldn't need the book of Acts. We wouldn't need the, we wouldn't need 1st, 2nd Corinthians. We wouldn't need Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd Timothy, you know, uh, Titus, Philippians, we wouldn't need James. We wouldn't need 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. We need 1st, 2nd Peter. We need, wouldn't even need the book of Revelation. All we would need was one last instruction because God loves you and you love him. That's all you got to do. Hang on, Jesus will be back soon. Amen. But the Bible is full of instruction, not because it's trying to put you into a merit, a, a merit system. But God knows that because your flesh has the promise of a future redemption, it's working against you. Right. And that your mind, because it has to be renewed over time, works against the spirit when it's not being renewed. Amen. And the world is working against you. And so you have to feed on the word of God. You have to pray in the Holy Ghost. You have to live in the spirit and you have to endeavor to stay in the spirit. That's works. I don't care what you call it. It's New Testament Christianity. Amen. It's not religious. Amen. Are you here? It's not being a religious person. It is being a person of the, of the scriptures and of the word and living according. Amen. Okay? So stay in the spirit. Galatians 3.3. 3. Now some people use this in a different manner. But Galatians 3, we'll look at verse 1. I'll quote J.B. Phillips for verse 1 if you don't mind. Oh, you dear idiots of Galatia. <laughs> so Jamie Phillips says, Who has bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has evidently set before you, uh, forth crucified among you? This is only what I learned of you. Received you the Spirit by the works of the law, by the hearing of faith. 
Are you so foolish, having begun the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Then you've got people who use this to say that if we say you're to study the Bible or you're to go to church or you're to renew your mind, then that you put them on a merit, a merit system and then you're taking them out of grace. No, he's talking about the works of the law, number one. You receive the Spirit by faith. What we do is by faith. We live in the Spirit by faith. But how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That faith you've got comes out of the Word of God. It teaches you that you can live above. It teaches you to live as the head. It teaches you that you can live victoriously. It teaches you that you can live in the power of the Spirit. And by feeding on the Word of God, faith arrives. And faith comes. It empowers you to live that way. Amen. Amen. But not simply because you got born again, does it automatically happen? Brother Hagin used to say, you got some people who think that the blessings of God are going to fall on you like white cherries off a tree. And that's, a, that's just further from the truth. I said, that's just further from the truth than it could be. Amen? You know, Paul wrote to the church of Corinth and said, you know, he that so sparingly reached sparingly. He that so bountifully reached bountifully. You want, you want to live victoriously? You want to live above? You want to live in power? You want to live? You got to live in the spirit. You got to live in the world. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So listen. You know, we didn't begin. And we're, we're beginning in the spirit. We're going to stay in the spirit. Now let me say this. I see it this way. You got a lot of people who come to Jesus and give their heart to Him, and now they think they can go live in the flesh. And it's okay. No, He didn't call you so you could live in the flesh, folks. He didn't call you so you could revert back and live out of your carnality. He called you to that higher plane where you can walk in the Spirit. You can walk in the Holy Ghost. You can stay in the Spirit. You can be led by the Spirit. You can hear the voice of the Spirit. You can be instructed by the Spirit. You can have the empowering of the Spirit. Glory to God. That's where He's called us to live. That's where He calls us to walk. And you can't walk there trying to figure out ways you can stay in the flesh. Argue me, I can do anything I want to do. No, you can't. Not and be blessed. Not and walk in victory. Not and have the blessings of God overtaking you. You can't walk any way you want to walk in. Now you're going to have to walk in the Spirit. Now here's the thing. He sends the Spirit to indwell you, to empower you to walk in the Spirit. It's not a matter of, I'm going to make myself walk in the Spirit. No, you become yielded to you become in, uh, ingrained and in, entwined with. You become uh, one with the Spirit, glory to God. You pray in the Spirit. And you stay in the Spirit, glory to God. Uh, Paul wrote in, in Galatians 5, 6. Great book. Hello? Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say, fulfill the life of the flesh. Now, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happens if I don't walk in the Spirit? See, there's a statement here. Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And here's, here's the antithesis of that. If you don't walk in the Spirit, you're going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Your flesh is going to govern. Your flesh is going to take over. Your flesh is going to dictate. And he says here, the flesh lusteth against the Spirit. In other words, his desires are the opposite of the Spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. The spirit has desires that are opposite of the flesh. Amen. And these are contrary to uh, one to the other, so that you cannot do the things which you would. But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. And then he goes on to talk about what the works. Uh, listen, I can live in fornication, and I'm under grace. If it don't matter, okay? The works of the flesh are manifest, which are adultery, fornication. Now stop. He said that the works of the flesh, the lust of the lust of against the spirit. That means fornication works against the Holy Ghost. Yes. God raised you up and brought you out of the dominion of Satan, brought you out of Satan's kingdom, translated in you into the kingdom of his dear son of God, so that you can walk in that realm of the spirit. Not so that you <coughs> that was loud. Not so that you can continue being carnal. Well, it works against the inner workings of the Holy Ghost in your life when you are yielding. It's not a matter. We're not talking about does God love you even if you sin after you're saved. Amen. God loves you. We're not talking about there's not restoration for you even if you sin after you're saved. There is. We're not talking about that you've got to you know, do penance for 60 years and you're going to crawl down the steps and cut yourself to get right with God after you sin after you're saved. 
We are talking about living a lifestyle where you yield to the flesh and let it work contrary to the working of the spirit in your inner man. And the Bible says we shouldn't be doing that. Adultery, fornication. Uh, where am I? Uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, enemies, murders, drunkenness, reverence, and such like. Basically, if, it's not, if I didn't list it, it's still out there. Are you here? Amen. Of the which, I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, past, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, habitually live. That, that, that's, that they want to live there. Now, I know people struggle with stuff. God is so merciful to the struggling. Amen. They want they want to be free, and they just they, they, they haven't learned they haven't learned these keys from the scriptures. They haven't learned the keys from the words. They haven't gotten to that place where they have become overcome. Jesus wants you to overcome. There's life there. But people who come up and say, you know what? I do what I want to do. I'm still in the grace. Those people, I'm, you don't inherit the kingdom of God. You're justifying living in that which is contrary to what God wants you to have. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against us. There is no law. Hello. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. The, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. That was our opening text. Steward of the mysteries of God. That I'm obligated to rightly divide the word of truth. I'm obligated to um, be faithful to my calling because I love my Master, my Lord and Savior. I submitted to Him and I love Him. I'm obligated to do this because He's called me. And that I'm, I'm, I'm to give, He said that he, uh, we're more interested in giving uh, uh, credit to how important Scripture is than we are to um, the needs of people. And I said, because of this, I must give heed to how I approach the Word. Amen. I'm obligated. Amen. Hello? Amen. If I'm going to feed God's people, I must give it in the most scripturally accurate way possible. Yes. Yeah. I have to love them. And then whether I'm preaching in the pulpit or sitting on the street corner or someone, I've got to give them the truth that will set them free. Yeah. And then I went on to write something else in my note. You know, and I because at the end he said, uh, you might want to review your theo, Mr. Taylor. So I wrote back and I was going to, I was going to send it. I was going to send it. And the whole thing here, if you listen to the Holy Ghost, you'll stay out of trouble. Oh, yeah. I'm writing, you know, and you might want to review the scripture. Um, if thou that judgest another, doest thou the same. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, yeah, I got my point in. Oh. And I, so I'm reading it to my wife, you know, just make sure. And I knew the whole time I was writing that last part, on the inside I was saying, don't, 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 don't. But I wanted to. <laughs> Ever been there? Boy, I wanted to. So I read it. I said, what do you think, honey? And she sits there and goes, well, it's all good except that I knew what she was going to say. That last part. What? Yeah. I knew what I was supposed to say. I'm saying, if you listen to the Holy Ghost, well, he speaks to you all the way up through your five foot, two inch counterpart. I used to tell people the Holy Ghost in my life is five foot two inches. She's now five foot one and a half. Tell her she just claimed more. Amen. Isn't that right, baby? Amen. Yep, right there. <laughs> hallelujah. She's over in the drive in over there and the feet out with the top open and hallelujah. I could have saved myself even asking her if I had listened to if I had just gone ahead and obeyed the Holy Ghost. Amen. I, I felt I, there was nothing going on by the Spirit the whole time I was writing the first part. When I started writing that last one, he kept he started going, no, no, no. no. See, the Spirit will speak to you. He'll help you stay in the Spirit. If you'll follow after Him and yield to Him in that still, small voice. It was a still, small voice until my wife spoke up. <laughs> then, it was, then it was authoritative. <laughs> I, knew this, I knew what she was going to say. I knew it. That's why I, I pre-planned and put it in there just in case I had to change it before I posted it. So I wouldn't accidentally post it. That might do a lot of people on Facebook some good. Yeah, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Write it in the boat, read it, let the Spirit of God speak to you. Yeah. Let him talk to you the third time since you didn't listen to me when you were writing it the first time. Yeah. Hello. 
See, when, when in life, God's spirit, they that are, they are the sons of God, you know, they that are born. Oh gosh, just lost that scripture. They are born of God, sons of God, something like that, but that's. They are led by the Spirit of God and the sons of God. God wants to lead you. He wants to keep you in the Spirit. He wants to keep, well, and He will lead you and guide you in all truth. I'll be when He, the Spirit of truth, is coming. He'll lead you and guide you in all truth. The, the paraclete does, will guide you to the right places. And I can doggone stinking guarantee you, he doesn't lead you to the flesh. Amen. A narrative of people in the church. He's leading you to the pastures. He's leading you by the still waters. He's leading you to walk with God. He's leading you to commune with God. He's leading you to be in this presence of God. He's are you here? Yeah. He's not leading you to your flesh so you can get away with stuff. Can you say amen? amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to stop right here because um, we got to get all this stuff out of the way before they open up. Open up. Now they got the door locked, broke. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. If you're watching, you want to give, you can give up through donations at fbc.org on PayPal. You can give through our square cash. Uh, we want to tell everybody we love you. Hallelujah. Uh, we love y'all. Um, last week, thank you, Dr. Bill, for all your effort. I know you were heavily involved in, in this. Um, when they present, yes. I got something to say. Okay. Let me finish my thing. Okay. All right. Then you can say something. Okay. We, I was just overwhelmingly surprised. What an honor to be granted uh, by Honoris Causa, uh, my doctor of divinity. Um, I, I am honored. I am blessed. I'm thankful to God. And, um, you know, I can no longer, I don't have to be called Mr. Ed anymore. I can be called Dr. Ed. Wilbur is gone. <laughs> Wilbur has left the barn. <laughs> Amen. So, I want you to know, thank you all for being such wonderful people. Thank you for being a part of, of, of the reception and all the, everything that went out last week. Thank you. I just want you to know I'm honored and blessed in Jesus' name. We'll see you guys on Wednesday at 7 o'clock on our Facebook feed next Sunday morning. We'll be back inside. Hallelujah. And then Melanie has a word. From the Lord. From how the Lord. long did Pastor preach, Jessica? How long, Kathy? Okay. That's how long I get to talk. The same amount. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this prayer talk. We pray over it. We thank you that it was laid on the bodies of the individual, that the evil spirits go, the diseases go, they're made every whit whole. Thank you for the transferability of the anointing. We call them whole in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. Um, the reason I came, Jeff, come on, baby. Is uh, first I want to reference God, who is the head of my life, and give honor to my handsome husband. <laughs> <coughs> Jeffrey. Yes, we need <laughs> So the reason that we come is, come on, Pastor Jamie. Uh, if y'all ladies feel like getting out the car, get out the car. If you don't, we understand. Uh, on last Sunday, we had our family and friends. Uh, Pastor got his doctoring degree, so this is Dr. Ed Taylor. And come on, Shannon. <laughs> and being that I'm Pastor favorite member, y'all don't be up here some kind of way, I get to present the presentation. So we decided on today that we wanted to do something special for pastors. Uh, Sister Ellie, you got it? No. You got Sister it. Debbie, see if it's in the car. <laughs> no? Julie, you got it? Let the bring it here. Babe, you got it? Pastor Jane. You're pretty, Jane. You're up pulling my leg. Shannon? I can't back here. Really? <laughs> Jeff, you got it. Oh, Jeff got it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff got it. We want to present it. He had it all down to be there. His yeah. wife had it behind him. Yes, for her. <laughs> oh. His wife had it behind him. <laughs> we want to present this to you and Pastor James from our whole church. We love y'all. Wish we could have done more. Take it, enjoy, it, and do whatever you want to do with it. Thank you. Thank you. We love y'all. We love you. Thank 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 you.
favorite woman. Stand on my right side right here, right now. You're right, I'm standing on his right side. <laughs> Amen. 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 Amen.